Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming along to our um, little presentation this morning. <clears throat> um, hopefully you can all hear me. A couple of things before we get started. Somewhere on your screen, there should be a little chat window. Um, so if at any time you have any questions or you want me to go back over something or you're just not sure about something, type in the question to that and I should be able to see it. Now, previously, I've not been able to get through all the questions that have come in on these webinars. So if I don't get to your question, I will follow up by email. But hopefully um, I will be able to answer it today. Um, I'm hoping to take about 30 minutes uh, to get through everything here. I will be honest, I've never done it in 30 minutes, but I am recording this session. So if you do need to pop off or you do need to go, then don't worry because I will send around a recording of everything that we've done this morning and you'll be able to watch that back or maybe show your team or, or anything later on. So um, I, I do try and stay within the 30 minutes, but it never seems to work that way. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So I'm going to share my desktop with you now so you can see exactly what I see. <clears throat> so in a second, you should be able to see or what you can see now is the um, learning journal system. Now, I know we've got a mix of people all throughout the country um, and some people are actually on a trial at the moment and some who have never seen the system before. So this session is all about the basics. Um, so I'm going to um, assume that uh, everyone wants to see exactly what you can do from the very, very beginning. So what you're seeing here um, is a demonstration account for learning journals, and I've had it set up for a typical private nursery. Um, so the way we set it up um, is, uh, we've got it set up here for a typical private nursery, which would have a baby room, a toddler room, and a preschool room. Um, this can be completely customized to your nursery setup. There can be as many rooms as you want, or classes or whatever you would like to call them. Um, and you can change these images. And this is really just a way to organize all the children's profiles. Um, so instead of having a big rack in each of these rooms with all the A4 ring binders or whatever it would be, in each of these are the children's profiles. If I click on the preschool room here, we can go in and have a look and see all the children in the preschool room. So here you go, we can see all the children that we've got. Now it's just a demonstration account. So I've only got eight or nine children here. Um, but you can have as many children as you want. So it's important to realize that there are no limitations on, an, on a full size account for learning journals. You can have as many children, as many staff, or as many parents as you want. We do do a smaller version of the system for childminders and nurseries, and there are a couple of limitations for that. But most of you, or anyone with over 20 children in their nursery, um, you can have unlimited children um, and as many as you want. So each of these represents a child profile. Um, <clears throat> so you might have a ring binder for each of these children on uh, the nursery shelves. Now, I know, we've, again, we've got a mix of people th from uh, throughout the country. The curriculums and the education systems are different in England than they are in Scotland. So I've got two children here that I'm going to focus on, one for Scotland, one for England, because I know they do differ slightly. However, the basics of them are exactly the same. So if I click into, we'll start with Amy first here. Uh, and Amy is on the Curriculum for Excellence, which is the Scottish curriculum. Now, this looks exactly the same as it does for the EYFS. The only difference is the curricular areas here are titled differently. Um, so in Scotland, we've got these eight curricular areas. And in uh, England, you've got the, uh, I think it's 17 or 18 different curricular areas. But what we're seeing here, <clears throat> down the right hand side, we've got all Amy's observations that have been taken for her here. Um, we can scroll down from the newest to the oldest and see all the observations that have been done for Amy. It's a very familiar format. You'll uh, have seen this, no doubt, in uh, other services. And what we've got are just all the observations from when this child joined the nursery. Now, uh, these are all uh, made up observations for this demonstration. Uh, but if I focus on the one that we've got at the very top here, what you can see is that we've got the date the observation was observed. We've got the curriculum this child's following. As I say, we've got many curricula. We've got the air level curriculum for excellence. We've got the EYFS as well. In Scotland, we're, we're a bit more complicated. We've also got the pre-birth to three. We've got together we can. We've got the first and second level of the of curriculum for excellence as well. So there's a lot of choice on there for whichever part of the country. Uh, yeah, Linda, just send through your questions whenever you have them and I'll get to them whenever, whenever we have them. Um, so we can also see when which part of the curriculum this observation applies to. 
in this box here, we've got a description um, of the uh, activity. So this part here, this box is the part that the practitioner, staff member, key person, key worker, whatever it be, uh, that's the part they have to type out. <clears throat> Everything else is actually pretty much done for you, but this is the part that you still need to be able to take a good quality observation. Um, and we'll look into this in a second. You can see which member of staff took the observation, and if it's been updated since, you can see which member of staff last updated it. There's a section for next steps, so you can set goals for children based on what you're observing in the activities, and we can add in comments as well, and comments can be added in by parents or staff, and uh, even in our own nursery, we actually allow the children to do that with the staff facilitating uh, them entering in the comments. <clears throat> The system is designed to be used on tablets, so iPads, Android tablets, Tesco Huddle, whatever it is you have, um, and it looks exactly the same on there as it does on here. You don't have to download anything special. You don't need any specific type of tablet. As long as you can have an internet connection, this will work for you. Um, so as it looks the same, if we can imagine we're gonna take an observation right now, um, all we would do, we would see Amy doing something we want to observe. We click on add observation, and this takes us into the observation process. Now it's very, very simple. We want to make sure that um, all levels of ability with regards to technology could um, use this. So all you have to do is follow the steps. So we've got select your learning outcome type. Okay, really simple. Let's say it's numeracy and maths. Describe the observation. This is where, um, I like to point out that the system will help you take observations quickly, but it won't necessarily make you take a better observation. So you do have to make sure that you're still thinking um, about the content of your observation and the description. So make sure it's um, descriptive, evaluative, make sure um, it links back to the curriculum or whatever planning you might be doing for the particular child. So here we go, describe the observation. Now, having said all that, I'm going to do something very, very simple here. I'm just going to write in that Amy was learning to count to 10. Now, you will um, be happy to hear, I'm sure, that uh, modern browsers now come equipped with a spell checker. So if, uh, for whatever reason, you have a, a spelling mistake, you'll see that you've got a, an underline in here, and your staff member will be alerted to that, and they can go and resolve it. Um, you would never put something as basic in, as this in your description, but just for the purposes of this, that's what we're going to stick with. Next, we have a, an area for next steps. So if you want to set a goal based on what you've observed Amy doing, you can do that in this section here. So it could be Amy's learned to count to 10, but she was missing out the number six and seven or getting them mixed up or around the wrong way. So you might say in your next steps, I want uh, Amy to consistently count to 10, getting the numbers in the right order. Um, you can actually choose to track this next step as well. And I'll tell you more about how the next step tracker works a little bit later. But you don't have to add in next steps because not every observation will need a next step and not every next step will need to be tracked. So this section is optional. We've got the date and time. That's all self-explanatory. But it might be something that you um, actually observed yesterday and you're only now getting around to writing up this observation. So you can click on here. You can change the date and you can amend that as much as you want. I'll stick to with today, though. Um, so next we come to upload our evidence. So um, you'll be very familiar with this. If you're doing this on a tablet and you click this button, it will ask you if you want to um, upload a new photograph, take a new one with the camera, it'll activate the camera and you can take a photo right there and then. So instead of having to download a photo, print it out, cut it out, stick it in, all that sort of thing, you can do it straight away. Now I've got some um, examples here. So I'm just gonna pick a couple of these animals. So I'll pick a kangaroo. I know they don't relate to anything to do with counting to 10, but we just have to happen to have them handy. You can have up to four photos and videos as well. We do have a video option too for you. I'm gonna pick a badger and a kangaroo, and I'm gonna do one more after this. And um, it's gonna be a polar bear. So sorry, I should maybe have, have held on that here. So you, hopefully you can see how quickly these, these photographs are uploaded. That does depend a little bit on your internet access. Um, we can choose to rotate it or crop the photo or do any, you know, we can manipulate the photo a little bit here if we want to. Um, so we've got our three observations, uh, three photographs. Now we move on to the next stage. Now this is where we connect it to the curriculum. 
So as we know that Amy was on the Curriculum for Excellence, so down here we have all the Curriculum for Excellence experiences and outcomes. If the child was on the EYFS, it would be all the um, EYFS the development matter statements split into the age groups. So this would be zero to nine months, etc. And what we do is we choose whichever one applies to the observation we've just done. We're in the numeracy and math section here. So we'll just find whichever one applies to what we've just done. I'm going to pick one at random. Uh, you can actually have several of these. Well, there's, there's actually no limit to the number of um, outcomes you can add to your system, uh, to your observation. So let's say it also includes this one. We use these green buttons along the side here. These numbers in this column, what they tell us is that this child has had four observations already linked to this particular statement. Uh, so we can see at a glance where they have no experience in each part of the curriculum. We can also go across curricular areas. So if we click on Literature and English, we'll now be shown all the literacy and English statements. We can scroll down, we can find any that applies to the observation we're doing because quite often, an observation will um, encompass several different areas of the curriculum. Let's go into the sciences. We're now in the sciences one here, and we'll click on this one here. There we go. So once we've added all these in, they appear at back up the top of our page. And before we move on, what we are asked to do is to rate the child's understanding of that particular statement. Now, by default, the system is red, amber, green, a traffic light system that everybody can understand. But in your settings, you can actually amend this and you can change these labels and titles to anything you want. So I've seen developing, consolidating, secured or emerging, expected, exceeding. So that is up to you, whatever you want these to be labeled. And you make your selection with these little buttons here. Now, it's important to note that parents will not get to see the ratings that you apply for your for these children here. Uh, we've kept this separate for a couple of reasons. And the main one really is that parents may not understand that at certain points in a child's development, they would be expected to be in this first category, this red one here. If a parent saw that it was red, they might not realize that, yeah, my child is actually expected to be red here. Um, and they may assume that you have uh, incorrectly assessed their child. So we've kept that separate. You can choose to share that with them if you want to. But by default, it's kept separate. Moving on to the next stage, once we've made all the ratings, we're then shown um, for this part, for this curriculum, we're shown what we call I can statements. So a lot of you will be familiar with this. If this child was following the EYFS, we would now be shown the characteristics for effective learning. This would be in the section here. And this can vary depending on the curriculum, but it works the same way. Um, you can choose to actually skip the section if you want to. There's no need to make a selection here if you don't, but it works the same way. If we want to add, if we want to add one in, we would choose our area. So let's say maths and numeracy, and we would choose whichever one that we want to. And again, put a rating towards that. Our final stage of taking an observation is connecting it to previous next steps. So does this observation complete one of Amy's next steps below? So here's the observation we've just done. Amy was learning to count to 10. And in this column here, we've got outstanding next steps for Amy. So if you remember back to our first stage, we could have tracked a next step for this observation. If we tracked it, it would appear in subsequent observations on this page. And what the system is asking is, does what we have just observed, does it achieve any of these next steps? So to use scissors independently and to cut something out or to participate in letter recognition activities. So these are the goals that Amy is working towards currently. Now it's uh, optional for you to add something in because obviously uh, an observation is not always going to complete a next step. But if you click this add button, this would connect these two observations together. And in her next steps tracker, we would see when the next step was identified, when it was achieved, and what the child did to achieve that next step. We can then choose to either publish the observation, save it for later, or delete it. If you publish the observation, a parent will be able to see it if they logged in. So a parent obviously only gets access to their own child's profile. Um, even if it's published, you can go back and edit the observation. You can change the content. You can change the photograph. So even if it's published, don't worry too much about uh, if you've made a mistake because you can go back and edit it. 
If you don't want the parent to see it, save it for later. It might be that you just don't have time at the moment to complete this observation. You just want to carry on and do it. And you come back another time. A very, very handy feature for all of you, I know, is going to be publish this observation for other children. So this is where you have a group activity, where you have lots and uh, maybe lots of children doing the same thing or taking part in the same activity. And instead of having to copy it out altogether to every child profile, you simply click, check this box here, click on the finish button, and then we're asked who was involved in this activity. <clears throat> so we're shown a list of uh, the um, children in this class, in the preschool room here, and we, choose, we can just say who was involved in it. So we'll say that Mark, Anya, and Toby were also involved in this activity with Amy. Now you do have to be careful because whatever is in your description up here, this will be copied over to Mark, Anya and Toby and we need to make sure um, we've personalised to a decent degree because we wouldn't want to see Amy's name appearing in Mark's profile or Anya's. So there's a couple of ways we can do that. We could just generalise what we've got in here and say a group of children were learning to count to 10 or we can use our little uh, code down the bottom here. The instructions are down here and all it says is replace the child's name in the box above with the code first name. So I am literally going to write in first name inside these square brackets. And what this will do is when we copy it over, it will replace this code with the first name of each of these children. So in Mark's, it would say Mark was learning to count to 10, Arnie was learning to count to 10, and Toby was learning to count to 10. So it's a real time saver, but you would still probably want to go back into each one and then personalize it to some degree as well. So once we've copied all those over, we can go back to the observations for our original child, which is Amy. And we can see the observation we took there. So here we go, we've got Amy's learning to count to 10. And even at this stage, I can go back and edit it. So I can go and say, uh, you know, but we or she missed out number seven. We can update that there. We can see all our photographs. And if I check on this tab here, I can see the different experiences and outcomes that were attributed to this observation. And we can see them all here. Um, now that is the, that is basically uh, taking an observation. 95% of the time, that is all the staff members will be doing. That process of add observation, go through all those steps and uh, save it. I've taken maybe about 15 minutes to do that. But once your staff and yourselves have done this a couple of times, you will see how quickly it is actually to do it. it can be done for a whole group of children in literally a couple of minutes. Hopefully that's clear. What I'm going to do quickly is just zip through and do another observation for a child on the EYFS, for those of you who would like to see that, because it is very, very similar. So Abby here is on the EYFS, and I'm going to copy exactly what I just did. So you can see we've got a lot more of uh, um, her curricular areas at the top here, but the, everything else looks exactly the same. We can scroll down and see all her older observations and see all those. Um, we'll click on add observation and just go through the same process. So we choose whichever eight curricular area it is. So let's say it's maths and numbers. Abby was counting to 10. Uh, add in the next step if we want to, change the date and time, upload some photos if we want to here. We'll go with a panther this time. Um, move on to the next step, and this is again where we add in our, our different statements. Uh, we just choose whichever one applies to what we're doing here. We can go across different curricular areas. And we add in our ratings up here. On the YFS, we've actually got the characteristics for effective learning here. So you'll see the three category headings with the different characteristics beneath them. Again, we just add in whichever one we want to. We can choose to rate this um, and then move on to the final stage, which is connecting it to any previous next steps. So Abby was counting to 10. Her next step here is encourage Abby to perform stories and use her imagination using the drama area. These two are not linked in any way, so we wouldn't select it here if it had been Next step is to encourage Abby to count to 10, then we would have. Publish it, save for later or delete it. Publish it for other children if we want to, but let's this time just finish this observation.
So probably in under a minute there, I've gone and taken a really simple observation of this particular child. That's taken an observation. That is going to be what your staff do 95% of the time. So let's move on to some other um, features and things that learning journals can do. If I click on our home tab here, and where I maybe should have pointed out at the beginning is that where learning journals actually came from. Uh, we've got our nursery ourselves up in Edinburgh. I'll just quickly go onto the website, Arbor Green Nursery. It's a working nursery. A, a few years ago, we realized that it was taking us a very, very long time to, to take these observations. So we developed this system for ourselves, and quite by accident, it developed into the system that we see now um, with hundreds of nurseries up and down the country using it. Um, we never planned it that way, but that's the way it's that's the way it's gone, and it's uh, doing doing very very well. Um, so, when everybody, when any user logs in, staff, manager, key worker, they'll see this screen. This is your observation screen, and this is the recent observations that have been taken for this particular uh, in this nursery. So we can see here the observation I took for Amy. We copied it over to Toby, Anya, and Mark and the one we just did for Abby here. We can see which staff members have been working uh, over this recent period. Uh, we can change our date range if we want to look at different times. We can focus on a particular member of staff. If I only want to see Anne's observations, I can do that here. Or if I only want to see a particular child's observations, I can do that here. So it gives you a nice little overview of what's been happening um, in the account. Every member of staff gets to see this because it's important, I think, that everyone knows what's happening um, with regards to the children's observations. Um, next to the observations tab, we've got a notifications tab. Now, what happens here is a child will appear on this list if they've either never been observed or they've not been observed in over seven days. So we can see here that Isabel here has had no observations in 70 days. Now these numbers are obviously a little bit exaggerated because we're a demonstration account with not real children. And seven days is maybe not something you'd be worried about. It might be quite normal for a child to go more than seven days without observation, but what it does is it just flags it up just so that you're aware, just so that the team are aware that these children have not had an observation. And once it gets to the stage of something like 70 days, you would then perhaps go to Charlene and just ask if she's aware of this, maybe find out what's happening, this sort of thing. So it's just really a way for everybody to be aware um, of where, um, of when children have been missed for whatever reason. You can obviously add in um, reasons for their absence in here if you want to as well. And as soon as an observation is taken for these children, they will just drop off this list. Hopefully that's clear for everybody. Um, Next to our notifications, we've got our parent comments. So when we first designed the system, the idea was to make it more efficient for staff to take observations. But quickly, what we find is that the real benefit to learning journals is the parent involvement side of it. Engaging parents in their children's profiles that they never could have before with the old manual system. So I've got a dem demonstration account here, so we've only got two made up parent comments. But in our own nursery, we literally have hundreds of comments every month from parents. And we would struggle to get maybe five or 10 comments, maybe even in a year previously, because getting a parent to come into the nursery, open up the folder, write in a comment, was very, very difficult. We tried sending the folders home, but they may come back in a different state than that we sent them out, or if they may not come back at all. Um, and I've seen this trend replicated throughout all of our customers and all the nurseries using the system is that the parents uh, will be very, very happy to leave comments on their children's profiles and their children's observations. It's, um, it's not a communication tool. It's not something that we'd say, Mark wasn't feeling very well today. Uh, can you keep an eye on him? This is for the parents to comment on their observations. And it's obviously, when you start getting hundreds and hundreds of comments, it's obviously great evidence that you do have a strong link with the parents and the parents have a strong link with you. And that learning is taking place at the home and you're able to sort of close that loop a lot easier. Link to the parent comments. I'm going to skip over reports. Link to the parent comments are parent contributions. So apart from um, being able to just comment on observations you've taken, parents are able to actually upload their own uh, 
photographs and own contributions. You can, so we've, in this type column, you can actually customize this. So if, in the demonstration, I've called this star moments, but you might want to call it home achievements or uh, learning from home or my family or anything, anything you want to call it. And we can view what's, uh, what a parent's uploaded here. So here we see in Mark's profile, Mark's parents have said, we went bike riding today and they've uploaded a photo of him riding a bike. Mark did so well, the balanced bikes at the nursery have really helped. And here's a good example of where we might see something where it's really linking what you've done at the nursery to what they're doing at home. And we can really see how you are um, affecting that child's development. Um, parents love being able to do this because it makes them feel more um, connected to their children's learning at the nursery. A lot of time, obviously, parents do not see what happens in the nursery. They'll drop off and pick up. So this, along with the observations that you saw, will really help them to feel more involved in their children's learning and development. Back to our home tab here. I'm going to, I don't think I'm going to touch too much on reports today. Um, that's not really a basic feature. And I see I'm almost at my 30 minute limit as well, but I'm going to keep going. If anyone does have any questions or something you want me to focus in on, please do put it in the chat box there and we'll get to that. Um, I want to go back into a child's profile so we can see a little bit more about it. Um, so if we go into Abby, uh, what we can do, so we've got an edit button here. So if we wanted to change the, the room that Abby's in or her key person, we would go in here and we would edit this. For any of you who have younger children who have babies or use, use a daily diary system anyway, we do have a daily diary um, system or feature on in learning journals. So this would be more for, I'll just quickly show you how it works. So say we want to add a diary entry for Amy, we would say what she did today. So this is not really a, 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 an assessment of her learning as such. This is really just a description of what she's done. So we'd say what she did today. We can customize these activity boxes. So we say she did some messy play music and painting. We can say what she had for breakfast or how much of her breakfast she's had. We can choose to add in nappies and toileting if we want to or sleeps, any medication and just general communication as well. Uh, the Daily Diary is an optional feature. Not everyone's going to need that. Not everyone's going to want to. Next to the Daily Diary, though, we've got Learning Tracker, which everybody will be interested in. So this generates a report for this particular child, and this will help you highlight where there may be gaps in a child's learning. Um, so we can see, again, Amy's on the EYFS. Sorry, Abby is on the EYFS. We can see all the different curricular areas here. We can go into each one, and we can see all the different statements for um this particular part of the, the curriculum and we can then make assessments on that here so here we've got all obviously all the different statements here we can see that we've not had any observations done here but we can actually choose to manually observe abby in these parts uh, so we can say that she has actually competent in all these parts and if we want to say for zero to 11 months actually we know that abby is uh very competent in that we can just make that green ourselves. Oops, make that green ourselves. Um, th this will change if um, you take observations, these numbers will change here. Um, but if you override it, the, the manual selection that you make overrides anything that has been done in observation. So if Amy had one observation and it was red, or we can see that she's actually had none, so we can see that she's going to be unassessed in a second. Um, if she had one observation and we'd said it was red, this would then change to red very shortly. Um, you can manually assess all the children here, and this will change then the display in the pie charts here. I'll go back into um, Amy, and we can see that for a child on the curriculum for excellence. And we can see how that works but it's exactly the same. But it's a really handy tool for showing where there may be gaps in a particular area. So for example, um, health and well-being, numeracy and maths and literacy and English, they are the, uh, they're the ones that we want to focus on. Um, they're the three important parts of the curriculum. So it might be, we could look at this and say, actually, you know, Going by um, Abby's age, we should have more health and well-being observations. So this might be something our key worker would want to focus in on. And again, we can go and look at all the different statements for that as well. Um, 
go back to Charles profile. Below are the learning tracker is the next steps tracker. So if I click on Amy's next steps, these are the different next steps we've got outstanding. You may remember them from the um, when we took the observation. So to use scissors independently and cut something out, participate in letter recognition activities. So at any time, the key person can go, go in here and see what they're supposed to be working on for this particular child. If we know that Amy's doing this right now, um, we can complete this here. We can have a look at any next steps that have been achieved by clicking on the achievement record. And we can see that, uh, you know, we've been working on how to learn to hold a pen properly to try and consistently count 10 without missing any numbers out. And we can see we actually achieved that on the 4th of February. We can go and view that observation here. Just had a question from Linda. Pupils are at different levels in the same curriculum area, such as early and first. So you've got what? Um, Linda, I'm going to get back to you. that's a little bit more complicated and it's really only applying to to certain users who are using the first and second level of the curriculum for excellence as well. So I'll get back to you privately on that one. I'll send you an email. Um, at any time, a parent or child can, sorry, not a child, a parent or staff member can convert the child's profile to a PDF. So when the child leaves, uh, the parent's obviously going to want to hold on to this. Uh, or we're going to have a, have a copy of this. So this, using this button, will convert the child's profile to a PDF because um, we obviously, when the child leaves, we don't want the parent still to have access to your account. So the parent can do this. They can they can choose to print it off if they want to. We'd advise against it, but it's up to them if they want to do that. Um, this blue box here. So any blue boxes are these ones that parents can contribute to. So if I click into Star Moments. <clears throat> we'll be able to see any parent contributions have been done. So here we go. Amy's parents said, we planted a tree in our garden today and we've got a photo of this tree planting here. Um, below that is a gallery. So very simple. It's just um, the images that have been uploaded. So we can have a look at all these different photographs and we can then click on each one and we can see um, the description that is linked to this particular photograph. And the parents can also download the gallery for this as well. And the final thing I want to talk to you about is a new feature that we've just added in, and it's a cohort tracker. So we access it through our children tab here, cohort tracking. Um, so what this does, instead of having the previous report with the pie charts there, that showed us the um, individual child tracking and where they were. What this does is shows us a group of children. So we choose which curriculum we want to look at. Uh, we can do it by room or key person, age group. We can choose whether we want to only see children who've got English as an additional language or any additional support needs. And we run the support here. Now, again, bear in mind, I have got only two children on the EYFS in this account here. It would probably make a lot more sense when you see a lot more children. But what you're seeing here are Here's our child, Abby, that we were looking at, and we can see which parts of the curriculum she's been assessed in at which level. The ones with an M are ones that we've been manually assessed in. So we might know that in self-confidence for this age range, Amy is actually green, and we can just quickly do that in here. So we can click on each of those, change them to auto. So if it was these, this, this one here without a... Um, without an M in it. These are ones that the system has done based on observations that you have created yourself. Um, the whole curriculum's in here, and what it's really handy for seeing is, okay, we have got no observations for this part of the curriculum here, or it might be for a particular age range all the way down in a column. If I do it for the curriculum for excellence, we've got a few more children in it. It might look a bit more. So here we go, we've got a few more children here, and we can see actually for this, um, this curricular area category, substance misuse, we've got no observations at all for any children. And we can see that Martha here has got nothing at all. So we can see really two ways that, you know, we might want, might want to focus in on this here. Lucy's asked a question for the EYFS, how we to complete the six week assessments, two year old assessments and a six month summary. So um, that's a bit more in depth. So let's let's have a look at that now. So we would use a different feature for that, Lucy, and it's the reports. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into our 
Child Abbey here. Now, what you will usually find is your, um, you may have a template provided by your local authority. And that's actually what the, I've got in this demonstration here. I edit Abbey, go into our reports. And what we've already set up is a report called our two year check. Uh, two year progress check for Abbey here. Now, the way this works, uh, if I want to complete the two year progress check for this child now, we've already uploaded the reports template. There's actually a different video that shows you how to do all this. And I'll send that out with the email this afternoon when I send this video. I'll send you a link to that reports video as well. What we do though is we download this reports template and we open that up. Um, and I think, I can't remember the name of the local authority, I think it was maybe Northamptonshire. Um, it's just opening up now. So we've got, there we go. I'll make this bigger so you can all see it. So we've got the UFS project at age two. We would fill this out for this child. So, and this, so I can't, it's, uh, Northamptonshire County Council, that's who, who provided this template. So I'm sure you've all got your own separate templates. Fill in all the details and uh, fill out this report as required. When you've done that, you would save this report and then upload it to the child's profile. Uh, so when, when I saved that, I would, have, I would choose that file. And you can also, if you want to, you can choose to let the child's parent view it as well. Um, so this report system is not limited to obviously things like the two-year progress check. You can have any sort of report you want. You can actually create your own reports um, and make them up as well. So let's have a look at reflection point. So this is something another nursery has done. What they've done is at periodic times throughout the child's time within the nursery, they want to write a little bit of commentary. So here we can see that uh, we've got several headings they made up and then they can add in something like Abby learn to count to 10 or it could be health and well-being abby is socializing well with her friends etc and again the spell check really helps in these situations so when i send out the video this afternoon of this session i'll also send a link to another video that we've got um which will um explain how to create these reports because so it's probably a little bit more in depth than we want to go into this morning hopefully that answers that question for you lucy um a couple of other basic things um so adding children and adding staff is all very very simple so to add a child we simply add child and it's you fill out all the information in regard here we can then tag them if we want to say they've got any additional support needs or if English is a language. Very shortly, we'll, you'll be allowed to create your own little filters here. So if you want to add in uh, anything else for whatever reason, it's a, ch a child with a funded place, you can maybe do that. Um, select which room they're in, select who their key person is. And the same goes for staff and parents as well. So we add in a new member of staff or for parents, we add in a new parent. So click on the parent tab add in a new parent and it's first name, last name, email address. Uh, oh, I should have pointed out actually. So when you take an observation, 24 hours later, the next day, a parent will get an email to say an observation was taken yesterday on your child and it prompts them to log in. So it says, why don't you log in and leave a comment? And it's just another little way you can um, uh, encourage the parents to engage a little bit more with the children's profiles. If you uncheck this box, they won't receive that email, but I'd encourage you to keep a check because it really does help with uh, keeping parents in touch and, and encouraging them to um, add in comments. For each parent here, you see who they are the parent of, you can see when they last logged in, and you can see if they've left any comments as well. So here we see William Gilbert is not actually attached to any children. We would just check on the children box here and choose William's child from this list down here. And let's, uh, oh, well, Stuart's here, but Stuart's actually left us now, which is why he's not appearing. Um, so they can have siblings. So we could say that Evan was actually Stuart's brother, for example. Uh, and then when William logged in, he would then be able to have, he would have a tab for Stuart and a tab for Evan. And that's how that would work. 
In your configuration, it's just some very basic settings. So you change your address, your contact details, you can change your logo, all that sort of thing, and set up things like those labels for the tracking, um, room names, room photographs, term dates, um, and all that sort of stuff as well. Hopefully that has been useful to you guys. Um, if anyone does have any questions, do fire them in. Um, you can always get in touch with me. If you go to our website, which is learningjournals.co.uk, you can call me on this number up here, 0131 212 5500. You can also, if you want to, you can send in an email using this contact form at the bottom of the page. If anyone is not yet on a trial and they would like to uh, try the system out yourselves, go to this free trial link at the top, fill out this form on the right hand side and we will then send you your login details very shortly after that. You can try it out free for 30 days. Um, 30 days is a number of plucked out there, so if you need a little bit longer then that's not a problem too. Um, pricing is very simple. As I said earlier, most of you will be on the uh, larger account, which is over 20 children, in which case it's 275 pounds per year plus VAT. So with that, you have unlimited children, unlimited parents, unlimited staff. You can take as many observations, upload as many photos as you want. Anyone that's smaller, you do get a nice little discount um, and child miners as well. We've got a very, very well-priced package for you too. Um, hopefully that's been of interest and thank you very much for coming along. I'll send out this video later on this afternoon and anyone has any questions, please do not hesitate to get in touch. Um, and, and that's about it. So thanks very much. Hope to hear from you very, very soon.